Hi, and welcome to our today's show. This is where we're going to have a big conversation. And our today's topic is basically about why is getting out of poverty so hard. And to help us tackle this topic is uh, are two gentlemen. Uh, joining us is Jerry William Ocheng, who is the former communications director of Sierra County. And also joining us is uh, Davis Ocheng, Davis Ouma, I mean, uh, I beg your pardon, who is the CEO <laughs> and the founder of Kisumu Soccer Plus. Uh, this is actually a program that runs within Manyata slums and tries to help youths out of poverty. These are the best people to help us handle this topic. And uh, they are joining us virtually. So to start with, Jerry, when you hear yes. somebody talk about poverty or just the term poverty, what comes to your mind? Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bona Vincent, for inviting me for this show. And uh, uh, we have to apologize for the mess up that we've had for, you know, technicalities. Uh, as you rightly said, my name is Jerry William Ochen. Uh, I must put a disclaimer before I answer your question uh, that however much we are discussing poverty and how to get out of poverty uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we are rich. Uh, poverty is relative. You know, uh, in my end, I can say that I have, I am poor. In your eyes, you can say that I am poor, but probably in my family or where I come from, I'm the one considered to be rich. I can say that you maybe you are poor, but uh, where you're coming from, everybody consider you as uh, the chairman, uh, the kiyogozi, that person that have money uh, and things like that. So poverty is relative. But when, po when, 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 when I hear the word poverty, what, what comes in my mind is a lack of probably basic needs that can help somebody survive. Uh, you, you, you get that somebody has no basic need or is having financial challenges or probably he's deprived of something. You, you can be spiritually poor. You can be emotionally poor. You can be physically poor because these are the securities that a human being needs. Uh, sometimes you just need somebody to pray for you. Sometimes you just need to be closer to God. Sometimes you just need somebody to love you. And uh, if you don't have these things, then you can say that uh, I am emotionally poor. I am ph I'm, uh, financially poor. I am uh, spiritually poor. A and, and, and other things that surround the word poverty. Nice. Uh, Davis, when you hear the term poverty, Thank you. what comes to your mind? First, I have to say thank you so much for the invitation for this. So I think uh, when I hear the word poverty, I just relate it to <laughs> a church mouse in a village. You know, in our villages, like when you say you want to say in a village, village churches are not booming like town. Huh? Mm. So when you can imagine that mouse is living in that church, you ask yourself, like, what will this mouse eat? Because in our village churches, I'm very sure that you can't even get a 50 shillings note and <laughs> no normally mouse likes such things and even maybe less sale of pepper so the, i just think of a village church with a mouse inside and i ask myself what mouse can eat <laughs> okay yeah and in short it is um, a state where we lack access to basic needs such as food clothing medical shelter despite uh, the different level we are in in this life okay perfect yeah. now jerry i would wish to know because you've mentioned that uh, people can be poor in different ways so if yeah. you can be keen and uh, maybe you've been looking at africa as a whole and then kenya in particular which kind of poverty exists in africa and kenya in particular uh we have uh, two types of uh, uh or two two levels of poverty you can say extreme poverty and uh you know perceived poverty e extreme poverty is where you find almost all systems are down uh sometimes you look at uh, 
especially in Kenya, sometimes you look at areas where children are still going to school under trees. Uh, sometimes you look at, uh, we listen to these things in radio, we watch them on TV, we read about them. Uh, areas that they don't even have a telecommunication or communication system reaching them. Uh, and, and this is what, what uh, sometimes you see a government or, or you see leaders putting putting up um, putting up uh, 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 till numbers or or, or 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 account numbers where uh, you know the public are supposed to contribute to help a certain cause that there's no food in that area totally so we need to contribute when you see a government uh, leaving its people to contribute towards a certain kitty to feed a certain group of people, then that it tells you that we are in that extent of extreme poverty. But then there's this level of perceived poverty. The perceived poverty is where you're not really sure if that person is poor, but but the way he dresses or the way he walks or the way he where he lives, you, you look at him and you think he's poor. But you don't know the kind of assets that he has accumulated or the kind of asset that he owns. Here in Nairobi, we've seen some community members that their main aim is to save. They're always saving and saving. But when you look at the way they dress, you look at him and you can tell that this person is poor. But then you are told that this person owns a number of assets, immovable assets like land, like uh, plots, like rentals and things like that. So those are perceived uh, kind of poverty. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Davis. Yes. Based on what Jerry has talked about and basically yes. the life uh, you've seen and experienced within the slums, now that you are yeah. having children and youths who are kind of uh, coming from a background that is kind of poverty stricken, how is the life yeah. of a, like a, a, a standard or kind of a family that uh, is not of middle class? Let me call low class within the slums. Yeah, I just feel uh, I just feel that uh, these are uh, the families living below the poverty line in slums. And as well, before I concentrate into that, I have to thank Jerry because as a, communi a communist person before, he's really explaining this very well. So in slums, in most cases, I think I also experienced this life because I was, I was once there and I really struggled a lot. So in slums, it's very funny whereby the kids can get just a meal in a day or they cannot get a meal. So I just feel that uh, when you want to explain this poverty, it depends with the area somebody is living in even in our country. In some areas, people can't get this. They can't, they can't meet the ends, and it becomes very horrible. Like, as I stay in slums, sometimes you find me getting out of the way and trying to organize lunch in school because a kid cannot learn with the empty stomach in school. And uh, so it is extreme poverty, and our poverty is, I can call it hunger poverty, because once we don't have uh, the food, we, can't, we don't have the job to raise the money in most of slums, and... Now it is just hunger poverty kind of that is how the name I can give it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So what what are some of the causes of of poverty, Jerry? Uh we have a num we have a number of uh, uh causes of poverty, but uh generally I'll talk of uh uh poor system infrastructure. Uh when you have poor system infrastructure in a country then definitely know that you're going a wrong way. Uh, and this we are talking about, if you don't have, somebody once said that a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So if you have poor infrastructure in terms of health, if, if your people cannot get quality, efficient health service, then know that you are raising a generation that will not be very much productive to create or generate wealth for them to be called rich or wealthy. You're going to uh, raise up a generation that is poor. Again, somebody once said that uh, if you want to kill the entire generation, 
then kill their education system. If they don't have the knowledge on how to make money or how to generate wealth, or they don't have the knowledge through education on how to even look after themselves, they know that we are having a generation that is going to be poor. Mm -hmm. Another thing that causes uh, 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 poverty, especially in Africa, is political leadership, where uh, you find people campaigning from January to January, from the very first day of a general election to the next day of general election. Uh, you find these people are always in the street and scaring out, away the investors that can help us generate wealth and, and things like that. So, so I, I think uh, 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 this kind of uh, thing that are co- real main causes of of of, uh, of of poverty, but lastly, uh, or among the last really, is corruption. Corruption is so much uh, deep rooted in our system to an extent that everybody believes that for you to get something, you have to pay for something. For you, Vincent, to send your daughter to go and bring you water, you have to tell her, Mama, go and get me water, I will get you sweet tomorrow. Or Mama, go and get me this, I'll get you this tomorrow. And so she she grows up knowing that for her to do something, whether bad or good, she must be given a stipend. And it, it, that gets into in our system where you get, we are, we, are, we, are, we are thinking tribal. We are a tribal kind of uh, a, a nation where I cannot give Vincent a job whether he's qualified or not because he doesn't come from my tribe or he doesn't come from my clan. So I, I'll, I'll end up giving someone who is incompetent that will not help me uh, generate or create wealth to take me out of poverty. Okay. Davis, when we're still talking about uh, the causes of poverty, actually this I'll ask both of you because I'd, I'd really wish to get your opinion. It is something the audience really wanted to know and personally also want to know. Davis, do you think poverty can be inherited? Uh, we can't hear you. Have you muted? Yes. So I'm saying mm-hmm. the answer might be 50-50. In, it depends with the situation. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. somebody might uh, come from a family which is poor from maybe, let's say, from the great-grandfather mm-hmm. where there was no education. Mm-hmm. And this person might also follow the, shoe, the, 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 the process of the family kind of a system whereby you also don't get to access education kind of so you will remain poor Mm. but again you can also find a situation whereby from this poor family maybe a child was out of the family sent somewhere and work extra to gain his or her own ways and get to be stable but now the way is when this child when maybe one of the family member becomes a bit better compared to their poor family will realize that we will have many pests around. The people will be like wanted to get the benefit of this one person. So again, I feel that this one person who has succeeded within this family will still be drained down to the poverty. So <laughs> it will be like somehow inherited and uh, it needs people not to lose hope and we have to be very focused and work extra because you can get out of it depending on the number of the population within your family. If the population is not so big, then I think this one person can help others, then they come up both together. But it can be inherited if you are not focused enough, according okay. to me. Jerry, I, I, I think uh, somebody who is above 18 who wants us to believe that he, he or she inherited poverty from his parent is a lazy person. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 child, a child can say that she or he was born in uh, in poverty and probably she or he is experiencing poverty but once you get to 18 and above you now need to focus and start working and seeing how you can you can you can make a name out of yourself uh we have seen people who have come who have come from the very very low uh uh, uh base of 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 wealth uh 
for example take example of the late njenga karume so njenga karume said that he was just selling charcoal but he grew up to be one of the richest person in kenya so so if 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 in any case he was to now start lamenting that you know i was born in poverty and i'm just selling charcoal and here i am no 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 you have to you have to really really try and find your way out uh but then again there are some parents that i can say they put their family into into awkward position you see the moment you take probably a loan not 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 necessarily a financial loan uh, there are those people in the village where they say vincent help me pay school fees for my child or help me uh, take care of a b c d i will repay you within 2 years if i don't repay you within 2 years then take my land and then this person fails to pay and the land is taken and once the land is taken the children now remain there without no land so they're inheriting the that that mis, misjudgment or mismanagement of their parent for taking or putting themselves into an awkward position on and such kind of thing and that's what i'm saying you can inherit but then once you are above 18 sort yourself out of poverty if you can okay and maybe just one something little yes i think it is also goes with the positive mindset mm-hmm. yeah because if you believe that uh, you can everything is possible and you if you keep making your steps forward then you're going to get mm. out of it so it is like mm. a both side it is like a 50 50 kind of a situation but it depends on the mindset yeah, thank you yeah okay back to you davis i i know you yes. told us how life in slums and and such families feels like now yeah. let's look at there are also families in the up country and also yeah. those in uh, urban centers yeah. or even rural areas but then yeah uh, they are living below the poverty line so i know you you, you are somebody who is hard working same as jerry and you've experienced these things in several locations so yeah. what do you really think or what can you say how does it feel living below the poverty line when handling your day to day activities uh, it's it's very difficult i just have to say it's very difficult because when you're living the below the poverty line you are not uh, sure of uh, the next hour kind of or the next day and uh, i can just say that you know this the, be, living below the poverty line in these two different uh, informal settlements are a bit a bit not uh, not working together They're a bit different because if you see somebody staying in slums and somebody staying in rural you will see like there's an advantage which the person who is staying in rural will have then there's also a disadvantage with the person in uh, slums let's take for example like uh, the person in slums is uh, renting a house and <laughs> you have to struggle and pay this house if you are staying like now i'm in kisumu town and all that then there is one staying in the village who is also having just a house there and uh, can go to the river and take bath and all that while in slums you pay for everything so to me i just feel that uh, the person staying in rural and living below the poverty line <laughs> i don't know i think some people can say that it is a bit of uh, ignorance because once you are at home and uh, you have this sufficient lands and everything at home i think you can just think and start something out of that and at least you limit i can remember sometimes back i used to grow skuma week and all that eh? so was, it was doing well the kills were doing well but again when you are a youth and you stay in rural then people will start also having never t- negative uh, perspective towards you and all that so we decided to move to town and change the world but i feel the poverty living below the poverty line is different in rural and in town yeah so jerry yes i want to combine two questions because is there a role that the government of the day plays in deciding whether a nation or the citizens of that nation or state become poor and also 
what is the role of the government in trying to ensure the state or the nation and its citizens are at least somewhere not poor uh, uh thank you thank you uh you see the government has everything to do with the financial strength or uh, the stability of, 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 of the people. And uh, when you see a government cannot have uh, a, a sustainable structures that can enable the economy to, to be stable, uh, then we, they, we have all the rights to blame them. Uh, because the government is being given the responsibility to collect taxes, you know, once they collect taxes or they collect the revenue, this revenue is supposed to help us in terms of setting up good schools uh, so that we can get quality education, so that we can understand what poverty is, so that we can understand what education, the power of education can help us with. But when you're in a, in a, in a, in a country where your deputy president goes into a graduation square, and tells the gra graduates that whether you are graduating today or not, you we have no job for you, then it kills the morale of any other person who wants to go to school or who, who wants to venture into education. But then again, it is not the responsibility of the government to create, to, 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 to give out jobs to the people because government is not an employment bureau, but it is the responsibility of the government to create an enabling uh, environment for people to do business and to venture into some other activities that can enable them be financially stable or raise their economic status. So, so, so we have seen situation where government is just over spent thrift, where gov government officials are always in trips where government officials are never in the offices. They are going for benchmarking after benchmarking and things like that. And the government is cannot, cannot really account for most of the resources that we give them in form of, of revenue. So, 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 so when you see everybody uh, is crying out loud and people taking to the street, is because the government has failed them. Yes. Wow. Davis. Yes. If you look around, you'll realize that uh, there are those who dress very well. Yeah. But in real sense, they are poor. There are those who dress, yeah. they, they don't mind about how, how they dress. <laughs> but then they are very well. Yeah. So, how can you identify that a nation? or a state, or an individual is poor? I just think that um, it depends with the, with what an individual is earning or what the family is earning on the other side of individual. Then again, on a nation, once you see the people are lacking jobs and uh, the, the cost of living is going so high, automatically that country is you will just rate that country as one of the most poor countries. Like, just what something on that, Mr. Jerry touched on our CS going for the benchmark left and right. And <laughs> this benchmarking they are going for, it has never been, they've never tried what they've seen. You know, it was like yesterday that the CS is landing at the airport and booking for another ticket, going to another country again and getting back and getting out. So it's like, I think besides all these, Corruption also costs us a lot, but on individual and the national uh, capacity, you just try to see if the prices of things are going so high, people are losing jobs, the taxation is becoming so high. It's just a clear, it is just a clear indication that uh, we don't have a country. We are living somewhere, which I don't know the name of where we are living to, because these guys have decided now to <laughs> fold up the country altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just on that, Jerry, uh, yeah. you know, there are people who are employed mm. or rather let me start it this way mm. majority of the people who are poor are unemployed 
or let me say all but then there's also a big number of those who are employed but are still poor so is it employment unemployment or is it a decision or what is it actually because uh, there are people who believe if you're employed then you are out of poverty but then big number actually majority of those who are employed are still poor despite the employment yeah so what where is the problem are they are they is it the employers is it the economy like what is it uh i i, I think uh, one of the biggest issue that affect uh us uh, especially the employed we have that uh salary enslavement mentality mm -hmm. that that you are just there you are waiting for that salary if it's 30000 that's what you're waiting for if it's 50000 that's what you're waiting for you cannot look for other ventures to augment or to supplement what you're earning and so if anything is to happen to that job that you're doing then you're totally doomed so so we need to have a situation where we have a conversation on how we can supplement on what we are doing whether you are employed uh, you can supplement at least by doing some farming back at home or whether you are employed you can uh, do some other consultancy so that you can ha at least uh, supplement what you're having because one thing that uh, they keep on saying is that taxes are being increased the prices of commodities are being increased but the moment you as an employed individual ask your employer to increase your salary that's where you part ways so salaries never increases and and here somebody you you are there and you are poor because you are working for the sake of bills so you're always working to pay rent you're always working to pay school fees you're always working to t take care of a b c d but you don't work to save something for the near future. That you see so many uh, retirees going back to the, to the village, but they don't stay long. They die because they don't have anything that they save. The, on the other hand, there's this other issue of uh, self-employment where you are, not, you are not employed by anybody. The problem with self-employment is that everybody thinks that the profit is for your own use. The moment you start working for yourself and then the profit that you get, you pay rent with it, you eat and everything, you are not going to grow economically. What needs to be done is that if you are self-employed, then let that business be paying your salary. Ask yourself, if I was to be employed by somebody else, how much would I have paid my, uh, been paid, for example? If, I'm, I, I, if I was to work for Vincent, or if I was to work for another Onyango, or if I was to work for Onyango Odor, how much will they pay me? They'll pay me 50000 So let this business pay me 50000 so that my 50000 can be included in the business as part of expense. And then the business take care of it itself together with you so that you can grow. But where we are, people are saying that we are self-employed so they can decide to go to work or not. When there's mandamano is, when, when, when mandamanos are announced, they feel like it's a holiday. Let's stay home. You see? <laughs> so so, 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 so that, that, that is the problem, sir. <laughs> okay. Davis, you know, just this maybe, is a big topic. Yeah, and, just want something a little. Yes. I just feel uh, like... Uh, what what Mr. Jerry is saying is just right, but again, it depends with uh, your salary. Mm -hmm. Because I was having a conversation with someone in slums who is uh, who is teaching in a certain school and earning fifteen thousand per month as a salary, and uh, this person is paying rent in town. And when the money comes at the end of the month, the guy has a debt which is over the salary. So <laughs> sometimes. Mm. 
you might end up uh, doing some of the jobs. So it depends with the job and it depends with the salary because this person is going to school as early as 6.30, the guy has reported. He leaves the school at around 7 p.m. The salary is uh, 15,000 Kenya shillings. And this person, again, you think of this person to maybe do a saving, try to do some farming at home, then it depends with the salary. This guy is like, the school, <laughs> it is like he has been purchased by the school. It's like a player playing for a certain club who has been signed. Huh? Yeah. And even the players have sometimes. So sometimes it depends with the salary and you can work and you don't know where what you're working what you're working for is going to. It also need a clear intervention whereby you in evaluate yourself and try to ask yourself where am I and where do I want to go to so that at least you can try to see what fits you rather than working for the bills and even when you get that money the bills is over the salary. Yeah. <laughs> okay so right. because of time I, I know this is a very interesting topic of course i'm learning a lot and i know our audience mm. is also la learning a lot because of time please yeah. allow me we'll have a part two of this yeah. live yeah uh, i think yeah. we would have sorted all the technical issues that we experienced today and because mm. i understand there are so many people out there who want to also take part like they want to participate so just three minutes each uh davis let me start with you yes why is it so hard to get out of poverty and then within those three minutes please also include the possible solutions that you feel uh, should be put in place my time starts now yes yeah, so it is just so hard to get out of poverty due to due to our our systems our our systems are being managed by our government because they are making a number of things which change and gives the common person down to the ground a lot of a lot of challenges whereby you can't pay for everything your job is not paying well and that employment is not there they give it to their relatives and the rest and if you get it then what you are getting cannot help you to at least develop yourself that is one two uh, even if you are to start a business so that you can make yourself stable at some point if you don't have a job to start doing saving and the rest because i know how people fear alone some of the a number of the youths fear alone so it is also very hard again for you to just get that capital to go and start that business but if you can get that capital to go and start the business again you don't have the experience in that business it is like you are going to help help what you've saved for a period of time to get finished you eat it and <laughs> it dis disappeared in that business so and i think that is also costing us with also miss prioritization because when you want to do a business you have to do a survey and get to know what should i do here and what should i not do here so it is just a mess. We don't have a running system. It is something which is a bit challenging to tackle from point A to Z, depending on how our situation is. Wow. Jerry, yeah. why is it so hard to uh, get out of poverty? Uh, uh, my, my, my thinking is a little bit uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not hard to get out of. It's not hard to get out of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that you as an individual, you need to do to get out of po poverty is to change your mindset and to have a positive thinking that you can make it. Mm -hmm. If the other people made it, even you can make it. But if you are stuck in some hole and you keep on lamenting and feeling sorry for yourself, then there's no way you are going to get out of poverty if you are in poverty. That's one. Two, it is not hard to get out of poverty if the government takes a deliberate move to ensure that we reduce on wastage our government is too full of wastage a situation where today you find a government planting trees from uh, the city center down the thicker road <laughs> up to ruiru knowing very well that in the knowing very well that in the next few months they're going to bring down the trees to have a, a double or a, you know double lane road so who accounts for the trees that were planted? A, a situation where a government procures uh, drugs and steals the drugs from itself and sells the drugs back to itself. You see, so if we take the if the government can take deliberate 
uh, uh, deliberate move to cut on corruption, then we can get out of poverty. Uh, we need a situation where the government takes a deliberate move to ensure that our people are knowledgeable on financial matters. We are not knowledgeable on financial matters. That's why we can't understand the kind of loan that our country has with other countries. We just hear that we got the coffers empty and we just hear uh, stories that, you know what, we are paying loans that so-and-so took, but we don't understand how those loans were taken and how they're impacting our lives. So we need one, a knowledgeable country. Two, we need to give our people some sense of power to decide on what is supposed to be decided on with uh, what we call a public participation. And lastly, we need to have some sense of how do we create wealth and how do we keep wealth. At all times, we must always think uh, wealth as power. The, prob the issue uh, about uh, politics is about power. You are either fighting to get that power or you are fighting to keep that power. You either fight to get the wealth or fight to keep the wealth. Yeah, so if you can't understand that, then perpetually you're going to be a poor man or a poor woman. <laughs> well... Basically, I'd really wish we continue with this conversation because there's so much we've not handled. Yeah. Of course, I, I had a question from the audience that you realize they've tried getting out of poverty, they've tried businesses, they try investing, but at the end of the day, it's not working. But what are the possible ways of ensuring it works? I know we'll handle that during our next session the part two of this when we'll now have yeah. a live show and we'll also share live links with the audience so that whoever wants to take part whether on phone call or uh, on video call we have them be part of uh, the conversation so finally just a parting shot 30 seconds uh, davis your parting shot yes yeah your parting shot like your your, your final thoughts for today okay okay so I just uh, I just think this is good because it educates our people, and uh, we all, it is always being said that knowledge is power. So better we have the knowledge so that we can find on how to move forward. So and I really appreciate for this opportunity, yeah? and let's you, do Jerry. more and more and more to educate our people. Yes, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vincent, for inviting me for this show. And uh, my last. Uh, a word to uh, our people is uh, let's embrace technology. Let's embrace technology. In the next few uh, years, uh, technology is going to eat each and every industry. Once upon a time, there are those days that banking halls were full, were packed with people. Nowadays, we do transactions through mobile banking. There are those days that you'll go to stage to get a taxi. Nowadays, you're doing Uber. Nowadays, you're doing everything. So let's not be afraid to embrace technology. Once we get to uh, embrace technology, we are going to learn a lot of things. Here we are, we are having a meeting through technology. It was never possible sometimes, some years back. So so, so I just appreciate that uh, this conversation should uh, go on so that we can have a more deliberate uh, uh, deliberation with more people. And uh, I thank you and uh, see you next time. Thank you so much, Tim. Mm -hmm. I'm so humbled. Thank you so much because I feel we've handled what we could handle for today. And I'm quite sure when given another chance, we'll do better. And of course, we'll talk about many more things that we've not handled, and of course, expound on what we talked about today. You know, time is limited. So thank you so much once again for coming and for accepting to do this with me. And I really appreciate. And to our audience, thank you, thank you so much for being part of this conversation keep your comments coming and of course if you have any question that you feel we need to handle because we are going to have part two of this please leave it in the comment section and if you have a question that you feel we've not handled so well you want us to expound more on it please also leave it on the comment section and thank you so much until we meet again we shall advertise when we are going to have the second session of this 
we'll also have a Twitter space about the same so that we have more people come in. We, ha we have uh, the whole community, the whole society uh, joining. And then as we also get it from our true gentlemen and have the conversation going. Thank you so much. Until next time, my name is Quach. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.